just let me know uh, the reason why i'm recording is that one of the ideas behind doing something like this is to kind of make a uh, open educational resource which can in turn be used by others to learn or uh, others to help others learn or in 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 a sense make the world a better place um there was one slide where i said this is a uh okay that slide is coming next so um before i go into my set of slides uh i had asked if possible to do a exercise uh has has anyone thought about uh that uh, do you want to talk about your imaginary device you can just unmute and uh, start talking Yeah, Swati, do you want to speak? Yeah, uh, I don't know if this is not not uh, not yet there uh, in terms of already existing was your question, right? But two things that came to mind uh, in terms of input device is um, one, how our mobile phones are not very easily connectable in terms of like telephone calls or uh, messages we, it's restricted to mobile but internet based things like whatsapp and all of course it works on uh, computer uh, the other is also like um, for maybe people with disability um, usually it's it's all related to having uh, having visual uh, vi visual ability so some things that is not restricted to that is is also not very commonly seen i don't have any device for it but this, these are some things okay thank you so uh, uh, you have identified a problem but uh, i suppose you will imagine a device with with time uh, is there is there anyone else who wants to uh, talk about their device uh, before you go i have to say something my uh, my computer is going to shut down okay so the power just came back sorry uh, you are so lucky i'm also very lucky uh, yeah yeah so whoever wants to go sahil you sahilister feels like mine is like neurolink do you want to talk about that or do you want to Uh, hi. So, like, when I read your question on like chat, so the first thought process was like, how everything is very well defined. Like, uh, we have this definition that we are going to input through like keyboard or like move things around with the mouse and stuff, things like that. So then I thought like these all processes or like our thoughts are converted as input device. through a physical means like that's a physical dimension of our thought process so then the first thing struck was like directly communicating <laughs> through brain waves so then i like like researched a bit further so it's somewhat like neuralink they to want to do stuff where like your brain is used to input stuff so so that was my thought okay um, so uh, you're talking about a device 
like Neuralink, <laughs> which means you're copying Neuralink. But uh, I'll take that as a device that can directly communicate with the computer. Uh, does it also is it an input device or is it an output device? Uh, like my thought was interaction with computer and people. So it's a bi-directional device. So you are just receiving stuff or you are also sending it out. So it's a bi-directional input output device. Nice, nice. So somewhat like a touch screen but uh, it works directly through uh, and where does it connect uh, it connects to the brain directly or yes so uh, so like as i mentioned earlier like we have this physical manifestation of all these input and devices so there won't be a physical manifestation then like it says like Maybe we have to put in a chip or something like that, but uh, that's the only stuff that would be there in physical form. Mm -hmm. Super, cool, thanks. Um, uh, does anyone else want to talk about their device? Yeah, hi, Akshay. Uh, Deepak here. Hi. Yeah, yeah, hi. Um, nice to hear you after a long time. Yeah, but basically I was thinking about something uh, like which is it, it's already there, but it's not uh, a kind of universal or very easily affordable or easily even accessible kind of thing. I was thinking more like a hologram which can because uh, 15 years before no one uh, could have thought of uh, having a video call on mobile. Um, so but now that's a reality. Uh, even before five years, so uh, something like a hologram where we can actually have a three-dimensional uh, video chat kind of thing, not only for one-on-one, -on -one, but for a conference kind of thing, which can replace a lot of traveling. Uh, so you can actually be present there um, at, at any point of time. Um, so if that becomes, uh, uh, that kind of uh, option becomes available in everyone's mobile, uh, because the bandwidth is not an issue now. Uh, it's It's only about maybe that hardware which needs to be built inside that mobile uh, the internet bandwidth has improved significantly so th that is something which I, I, I was thinking nice so uh, is that uh, is that somewhat like uh, the meta verse kind of concept from uh, uh, Facebook's uh, this, uh, but uh, uh, it wouldn't be using a virtual yes. reality headset. But um, that's what uh, uh, that is something which will be uh, if at all you're using a VR headset, it will be a metaverse. But I was like more uh, in the real world itself, like just like on the screen, how we can actually see the video. Uh, similarly, right. if at all you just place the place the mobile on the desk uh, actually hologram will be speaking so which gives instead of a two-dimensional video it gives like a three-dimensional person which it's 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 there like in few movies you can see and in few uh, like concept videos uh, this concept has been tried um, so this mm -hmm. is something which uh, uh, is an aspiration which will be there i think another 15 20 years down the line um, uh, in a video call it will not be two-dimensional it will be a three-dimensional video call um, so I was thinking around so so it it will feel like teleportation has become a reality. Uh, is it yeah. an uh, input device? Is it an output device, or does it do both? Um, so, so, sort sort of both because like if at all I'm talking, there should be an input device which which can actually record that and like process it immediately instantaneously there and on the receiver end also uh, because it's it's sort of both. Nice. So uh, a question there. Uh, so if if uh, if say two people are in a different room and uh, they are talking to each other, uh, should the hologram be only that human being's shape, or should the hologram also recreate the chair they are sitting on? So uh, I think that was something which it uh, my my imagination was not one on one. It was like 
all five people six people who are sitting in a conference room because just to attend that meeting like i travel 2000 kilometers to delhi just to attend to that meeting only because they want that satisfaction of sitting in front of each other um, so if at all that sense of satisfaction of all people sitting in their respective chairs and like each of us can sit and we can if they see um, that that three dimension only that three dimensional thing is missing otherwise uh, like in covid we were all managing with that two dimensional uh, photographs but as soon as it became accessible flights became sta- like started flying then that has become again uh, the same issue is there come come travel so i was thinking because this is the same thing all over the world so something which gives uh, yeah. a sense of not just the human being with the head and uh, uh, like or not only the upper part of the body uh, but the, but the entire feel look and feel along with the chair it's as if the, that person is sitting in front of you super thanks <laughs> um uh yeah uh, does anyone else have a, a device uh, that they want to talk thank about you, thank you Or Swati, do you have a device that is coming up in your mind? No, no, but I really like Deepak's idea. Okay, so I am going to assume Darun, Shreyas and Arun forgot the device. Darren also has brought something similar to Neuralink. Okay, so um, unfortunately, a couple of people who wanted to join couldn't join for because of internet being the the URL not loading in their browser. Um, so hopefully, the recording will help them. Uh, I'm just gonna skip over to what this whole thing is about. It's it's an experiment. Uh, I'll be very honest. <laughs> with everyone uh, it's an experiment conducted by me and all of you um, what is the experiment about i love computers i love coding and i know many people want to start loving computers and start loving coding doing all of this but for some reason there is some disconnect uh, people are not able to uh, start or people face some problems they don't know how to go ahead or they don't have uh, uh, the kind of opportunities or the resources required to do the steps that are required to start coding so um, i was like why shouldn't i uh, try and see at least what can be done or what is the problem so for me this is a way to understand uh what the actual problem is in when people try to learn programming or coding or computers they're not able to uh, uh, do that effectively or they don't feel confident or they don't level up fast enough so for me that it is that and uh, for you how you're going to make use of this you can define uh, i'll come to that in a while so why i am doing this or why you should spend your time with me is one i am a programmer i mean i get paid to do programming and i love doing that and also i have some experience in helping adults learn so i have i've been an instructor in a in an emergency medicine training i've been an instructor for uh, a mentor for programming interns in uh, multiple projects including debian mozilla 
and uh, something called Swadandra Malayalam Computing, which is a free software language collective uh, and free software community of India. Uh, also at work, I mean, I, I help others, uh, junior software engineers level up into senior software engineers. So um, I have some experience in helping adults learn, um, but not at the specific uh, topic of, you know, from Okay, I got uh, disconnected. Uh, am I back? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Okay. So, um, so I want, um, uh, I want uh, all of you kind of tell me if you're already coding, then uh, I don't know what you're doing here. But if you're not coding yet, uh, or if you're not doing programming, or if you're not using computers. Uh, the way you would like yourself to be. I want you to tell me uh, some of the reasons why it could be so. And the reason why I ask this question specifically is throughout this series of discussions, we can address them specifically and individually. So um, this is a moment for reflection and introspection on why, if you're not coding yet, why you're not coding yet. You can either unmute and speak or you can type in chat. Either is fine. I think uh, I, I'll go. Okay. So basically, the reason is unawareness. Um, um, it's, it's, I don't know whether it is difficult because I've not tried it. But always it was there in the back of uh, my mind. There is something which I should learn. But uh, again, because procrastination or whatever, uh, I didn't ventured into it. But when I saw your message and that thoughts were always there, that's when I thought, oh, yes. So why aren't you coding yet? Because unaware, not not tried, not not tried is is the answer. This is for me. Makes sense. That's a very useful insight. Uh, others. I can share my thoughts. Um, uh, so coding can mean a lot of things, right? So in general, I uh, don't know how much that will help me. The specific times when I felt like it will really help is when I try to use R uh, to do statistic, statistics and uh, for research purpose. And, and that's when I thought, uh, it, it it would really be helpful, but I took some courses on Coursera to learn that, and uh, I feel like while learning, uh, whatever that videos we used to teach, I could grasp. But I, I I think I don't have a basic level of understanding how to imagine what can be done out of coding and not be done, and that's why it's very in intimidating, and I couldn't go forward with that course. And I, I am also not sure if, apart from using it in research and statistical analysis, if I would use, I mean, if I would find it useful anywhere else. So that and awareness as well. Mm -hmm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, and I also see the same thought being expressed by um, Darren, who says, not sure what it can do for me in the chat and also lack of time uh, and in uh, okay Shreya says indolence i'm gonna google for 
avoidance of active expression laziness okay and lack of exposure um and i don't say is there are a lot of languages don't have idea of where to start and what will get so uh by what will get i assume um i don't know you're also saying that you're not sure what is possible uh, i'm just going to assume that um so uh i will i will uh, go through a series of principles which are called adult learning principles uh some of you might have already uh seen it or uh, applied it in your uh, life uh but adults must want to learn so until and unless um, there is a reason uh and there is a inner motivation and excitement and passion to learn uh it's very likely that even if you passively you know it it would be nice if i want to learn if i could learn programming but that that won't help uh it it's only if okay i want to learn because and on that point adults also learn by doing so if you have some project say like uh, swati you said you had an r uh, research project and you you learned r for that and you used r for that so when you have a project and you learn by doing and you want to learn that's typically when uh, adults learn certain things so when 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 you say you feel lazy or when you say you don't have time it typically means that uh, there is something that adult, adults look, are looking for which is missing in your particular life right now it it doesn't mean that it can't change a month from now or a week from now or a year from now you might the situation might change and you might have a reason and you might have uh, an opportunity but if that's not the case today then it's very unlikely that uh, you will kind of make use of any opportunity not just this one but any one so essentially uh, what i want to say is that even if you feel like this session or this series of uh, discussions is not helping you learn or you don't feel engaged you don't feel uh, it's valuable don't take a take think of it as okay i am not fit for programming or i am not i'm not good with computers don't take it that way it just means that uh, it's not the right time for you right now and and i am expecting that after today at least half of the people in this uh, list will fall out and uh, only like three people will remain in the next session if we are having one because that's the nature of how adults learn they 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 they, they want to try things but uh, they figure out okay it's not the time for me right now so with that particular thing said i also want to say it's also about creating a learning environment right uh, many of the online courses that we see uh they might not be a very good fit for our learning needs so if if i learn a particular way and i have certain questions and i have certain way of self thinking and this course maybe because of the medium like i can't put a interactive course on youtube if it has to be an interactive course it has to be a session where a person can talk to each other right so the medium might be a problem at times uh, there might not be a problem solving meaningful engagement uh, kind of uh, facilitated learning that experience of uh, the session itself matters so this slide says it best uh, we cannot have a fixed curriculum which is what is typically seen in uh, online courses there has to be an informal environment and the learning itself has to be an inviting collaborative uh, activity and you should feel as much participating in the in the in the entire process as you would like to be so that that kind of thing 
uh, might help a few people when they do have some time but it's just the course and the structure and the way the courses are uh, laid out that if that's what makes you put off if that if that's what bores you i'm thinking in this experiment we can use uh, this platform uh, as a way to solve that so what i'm saying is let's i am i am willing to give my time uh maybe an hour a week or two hours a week to create a learning experience that will work the best for uh whoever wants to do this does that make sense <laughs> i will pause here for a second okay so uh, and the nature of this experiment will it be for individual or something related program okay darren uh, i will come to that question right away so just before that uh, so this is a collaborative experiment it's it's not just my experiment I, it's it is my experiment uh, in the sense i do have certain uh, objectives questions hypothesis that i am testing but it's also an experiment that is collaborative by its nature because that's the only way it will work and therefore you can set the learning goals for yourself you can set the targets you can decide what success looks like for you and we i mean we can all uh, sit together right now this, this this entire session we have about half an hour remaining the scheduled time and we can figure out what it should look like what what how the course should be or, or how the discussion series should be uh, should be uh, i mean i'm not going to give any leading questions we can do whatever we want we can design design it in the way we want and again this is a collaborative experiment and i will only re request or retain just two rights one is the right to you know record this whole uh, interaction uh, record my observations uh, and including uh, videos recording and publish it as an open educational resource of course you are also welcome to do it okay you can also record and publish it and uh, i'm kind of requesting that uh, nobody denies the consent to record and uh, publish but if at all something happens that uh, you feel like this particular bit should not be published we can of course edit and remove that section and then uh, i will also retain the right to take decisions if there are any conflicts and i'm i'm assuming there won't be a lot of conflicts and just for the safety of uh, uh, people who are participating uh, i'm going to assume uh, i'm going to i'm going to take some decisions if at all the need comes so those are the only only rights i want to retain the rest of it is an experiment is a collaborative experiment and i promise to be regularly available to continue this experiment i do have at least my saturdays and sundays free um and i i will put enough intellectual energy to come up with creative scenarios exercise uh, and stuff like that to help facilitate your learning hi vaishnavi glad you could join um and in return i ask you to promise only one thing to yourself and that to to yourself not to me it's just that be honest to yourself and trust yourself in the sense um if you are honest with yourself about whether you need this course now or whether you don't need it uh or is this something you want to do those kinds of things but also about um you know everything i mean this is just a guiding principle i follow but that's something i want you to promise yourself and uh okay before we go to administrative issues i have to pause here and
discuss this slide further. So my 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 slides are over. Uh, for the next uh, twenty seven minutes, we can discuss how to structure this course, what what we should discuss, and things like that. And like Darren asked, should we have individual goals? I think it should be related to programming, Darren, because um, as in programming, as in computers, basics of computer to till uh, programming, including I in my original tweet, I said we'll go through um, spreadsheets and then go to programming. So that I don't want to dilute, uh, but within that, we should have uh, some structure that we can discuss now and uh, decide. So, um, of course, please feel free to unmute and speak or type in chat. Um, I heard one thing, which was uh, uh, when I asked the question, why we are not already programming. Uh, there is this point that you don't all you don't see a benefit or you don't see the possibilities. So it might be a good idea to have one discussion on the possibilities of uh, you know what computers can be used for how is it uh, helpful and we can tailor that to your particular field um, if you're working healthcare maybe something related to healthcare research or if you want to build a website building websites so those kinds of uh, um, tailoring we can do and we can have one session on, and this is just a suggestion, uh, one session on identifying the potentials of what computers, learning computers, learning coding, et cetera, can do for you. And uh, again, I want to bring the focus back to the slides on adult learning. We won't learn um, anything unless we have a strong reason to be we, we we will only learn if we have something where we can right now apply it to our life so if we can't apply it we, we won't be able to learn but on the other hand it's not like we need to have a programming job and <laughs> there we'll apply you there are plenty of things you can do using a computer and I'll, I'll just give one particular uh, example. So when I started using a computer, it was the World Cup going on. I think it was the 20, 2006 Football World Cup. And uh, I had a Excel spreadsheet with uh, all the team's name and the groups that the teams were in. And I was just writing formula, Excel formula, to calculate which team won, which team lost, how many goals, the group standing. So there were A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, eight groups. So what are the standings within each group? And then which quarter final will be played by which teams? So I just had to enter the score and the, the spreadsheet would automatically find out, okay, Brazil is playing against Germany, those kinds of things. So it was just something I, football was something I was interested in. Computer was something I wanted to learn. So I just thought, okay, maybe I'll follow football with a computer. So those kinds of made up uh, situations can also be helpful for learning. That can also help, uh, uh, I think. So it might be useful to think about those.
Okay, so uh, can I ask one question? There seems to be uh, a thread emerging in the chat that uh, everyone wants to learn programming. Is that uh, right? Is that a collective goal? Okay, can you brief mention what programming would comprise of? So when I say programming, what I am thinking is, um, that's actually a really, really hard question. So uh, uh, everything to do with how a computer can be programmed, can be called programming. So how, however we can communicate with the computer is programming, um, but, there can be an artificial division created about uh, how the, uh, the, the basic idea of what programming is, like how does a computer um, run instructions, how do we store uh, data, how do we manipulate data, what, what is the flow of a programming. So the, the, these words I use are just the basics of uh, what programming is, but then there is also this practical aspect of things like JavaScript, Python. What, uh, how, how do we use JavaScript to build a website, or how do we use Python uh, to do some research? So that 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 can also be called programming. So this is an artificial division I'm creating to help us think uh, through it. Uh, which which of these is a kind of more useful. I have few thoughts if I could share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. Feel. The former thing where you said basics of how computer works and how information gets transmitted, all of that I feel is like basic grounding that I would really appreciate like uh, would it would then help help me think through like how the possibilities of programming also like what what potential it has and uh, data privacy issues all of that also I think makes sense only when I have a stronger basic foundation like this so I wouldn't choose either or or kind of thing. I think both are important. Uh, and one more suggestion is uh, where some of these basic things that are that that will help, like website development or um, uh, maybe the, this Excel and all of those can be kind of kind of a collective thing where we all participate. But there could be specific. Uh, domain related things that maybe can be focused on for certain individuals, certain participants. Hmm. So, uh, um, one thing, uh, so from what you said, it, it sounds to me like you're suggesting a modular kind of a structure where a module would be self contained. And people would be able to choose, okay, this module and this module and this module, but not this module and not this module. Um, and uh, I think that's a very nice approach of how to structure this as well, uh, wherein uh, it might fit the needs of a multi, multi, what is it, multi background group like we have. So uh, can can we just list down the modules then? Uh, one would be 
possibilities uh, can we use shared notes i don't know how many of you are joining from computers but there's this feature called shared notes where you can pick shared notes um, so can i say one module is about the possibilities of computers of course this cannot be just one module but uh, we could uh, have a longer discussion on that if required um, then uh, then another module can be about the basics of how a computer works which includes things like uh, uh, what is ram hard disk uh, cpu um, um, motherboard what does your computer uh, uh, what does uh, what happens when a computer starts which is on uh, and things like that and then uh, that that module on basics of com how a computer works will have to go further into uh, file systems um, partitioning uh, what is a file what is a folder what does it mean uh, really on the on the in, in binary terms so what is binary how does computer go from electricity to thought yeah that kind of uh, basics module uh, someone was writing at the top and i think they deleted it okay so uh, three can be how the internet works how does uh, how does the net to, uh, what is uh, what is a server or what is a client um, what is a cloud where where does uh, where is data stored or what is this basically the internet uh, a lot of things web web stack what is html uh, css javascript http tcp those kinds of things um, yeah so we covered possibilities of a computers basics of how computer works and basics of internet and networks Is anyone suggesting anything in the chat? If you're not able to open shared notes because, say, you're from a mobile device, you can just type in the chat. Uh, I'm reading out whatever is typed on shared notes. Maybe some sessions can be knowledge sessions where various topics discussions happen while a few sessions where we actually do things and on and um, yes, Swati. So um, the way I'm thinking is um, knowledge sessions as such we might not need at all and. Uh, Where is that adult learning principle? Yeah, so so for example, this one, a meaningful engagement such as posing and answering realistic questions and problems. So that that kind of a approach where okay, uh, now I understand what you mean by hands-on, uh, more of uh, coding, programming. So uh, 
yeah we we can try a few things uh, where some of the sessions we can have very theoretical boring uh, I, I i i'll try to make it not so boring but that kind of sessions and then uh, then some of them really hands on so internet and computer history okay i'm going to add that to the shared notes So we can also change this structure on the fly, like once we start. Uh, and it's already 9.50. So what I'm going to do is, for now, let's just start with this. Anyhow, these seem like topics we can't avoid. So let's just stick to this much for now. And once, if, one, if and when we finish this, we'll think about the rest. Or while we are going on with the other things, we'll think about the rest. And I want to focus on a few other things right now. What administrative issues. So one question I have is, do we need a common communication platform where everyone can be together in a group? If so, please also suggest what that would be. I know some of you are from Twitter, some of you are from WhatsApp, some of you are from Telegram. Um, nobody was on Matrix because I didn't share this on Matrix. But uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, Sahil, I know you are also on Telegram. Um, Deepak, would you have a problem with Telegram if we were to go with Telegram? I don't have uh, an account, but I can create it. It's, it's not a problem. I think it will not be a problem. I can well, download it. I mean, if uh, if you can, there are many advantages of Telegram. One is that uh, uh, the phone numbers do not become shared with each other. So uh, you can keep your number private. The second, and for me, the most important is that the history of the conversations will remain, which means uh, even if someone joins later, uh, because let's say some of you might drop out, but then someone else might join. So they'll also get a chance to uh, see the past uh, conversations and if we are sharing notes or uh, discussing things, it will be useful. So uh, we do need a communication platform, I assume, and that would be Telegram. Does anyone want yeah. to volunteer to create a Telegram <laughs> group? Super, super. So, uh, Vaishnavi, thanks for that initiative. Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you can create it as a public group, uh, or I mean, there will be a link, right? So, I can share that link with everyone because I have the contact of everyone. But uh, you can create the uh, group, and uh, yeah, uh, you can create the group and uh, put the put me also in the group and uh, share the link. Uh, so. Uh, that is done please make sure that history is visible for newcomers um, the other one i wanted was uh, timing wise uh, this uh, 9 to 10 pm ist on sunday work uh, is that is that something we can try for a few weeks at least Th by the way that is this time slot the one we are Right now, okay. So, uh, it seems like it works for at least most people. Now, I just want to give um, uh, 
those who couldn't join in the beginning a chance did you bring uh, your imaginary device you want to talk about it even if you were there initially if you want to talk about it now you can talk Mm -hmm. I I suppose uh, you have really forgotten your device at home. There was someone who took it very seriously. Uh, I think they have been joined this session. Uh, but yeah, thanks, uh, Dr. Deepak, Swati, and Sahil, and also Daron for sharing your devices. Um, does anyone want to say anything? Yeah, hi. Uh, just, just wanted to. Add, it's a, it's a very nice initiative, and I, th I think it's, it's a very uh, like most whatever to extend possible the diverse group is here, and I'm looking forward. Just, just curious how how this will unfold and. Uh, like how, how it will proceed indeed me too yes 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 hope for the best Thanks for including us as collaborators in the experiment and being honest about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, because I have not done anything like this, like exactly like this in the past. So um, uh, I have to be honest because it shouldn't be a waste of your time uh, as well. So. We do have four minutes, so I'm just going to turn on multi-user whiteboard. Uh, what is a self-teaching device? Ah, devices can ready like humans in how to learn. Nice. So that would be your imaginary device, I suppose. Uh, right now, I think there are human beings who do that. Uh, but imagine a device which would uh, know exactly what problem you're stuck at and uh, find a solution and guide us towards that like basically when you are learning something like a computer or you're doing something on computer and you're getting stuck because which this happens to me with a lot i got get stuck a lot of time it just like in itself tells you that where you are wrong and how you can correct it so something like siri but like more advanced that oh, you are stuck you need to do this and i get stuck in a lot of things like when I'm running Excel or Stata or SPSS so and sometimes when my computer breaks down or something so I'm more of you know that is basically my imagination and I can learn all those things so like for example R has this thing swell where you can learn on your own it teaches it yourself so something like that but like much more advanced what is it swell 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 S W I R L. R the programming language has this thing called S W I R L Swirl, which teaches you uh -huh. in itself. Like you, it comes with you, but it's not very good in teaching. Like you do need help. 
but basic it get help starting with the basic also but r is very complicated so i just didn't put that much effort but yeah nice so uh swirl and clippy there used to be something called clippy uh in with microsoft savanita please uh, unmute and talk feel free to uh Okay, so uh, while Savanita is rejoining with <laughs> with microphone, uh, it's already nine fifty nine. So I'm just gonna say, uh, if anyone wants to leave now, please feel free to leave. I won't discuss anything serious after this. Uh, you can continue drawing, um, Hello. or you can talk. Yeah, hi, can hear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I joined late. I just wanted to. I didn't understand this imaginary device of what exactly you were asking before. Okay, so uh, I was uh, suggesting that we can all imagine a brand new input device or an output device. So we already have mouse, joystick, uh, even touch screen as input devices for computers. And we have screens, speakers, printers as output devices. What could be something that nobody has seen yet, but something that you can imagine? That that was the imaginary device. Okay. Okay. So, so I don't know what something... because only you know that. Yeah. Okay. Is this uh, is this where you share with others in the group about this imaginary device or? Yeah, yeah. Did you bring one? I mean, I thought of one. Yeah, please share. Yeah, it's just where I'm sure maybe this might be existing as an app, but uh, where you screen a text in any written form, and uh, not only does it recognize that recognizes the text, but also it organizes it in a much more efficient way. Hmm. So a lot of indexing and cataloging uh, can be minimized. Like this is just written notes, which can be indexed in a more systematic way. So the input here will be written notes and the output will be systematic organization where you can just find out what was written where. What we do now is just going through handwritten notes, right? So. Makes sense. So. Uh... Yeah, so uh, so le let me ask you one more question. So where do you write? Is there a surface or do you write on a pen and paper and? Yeah, yeah. We write in, uh, in a notebook with a pen. And then, uh, then you have a camera to capture that? Correct. OK, so the camera is input device. Uh. And uh, the part that does all the intelligence is within the computer, right? Yeah, exactly. And the output will be in form of a very well organized indexing. Like even if I type in the date, right, I should get the information. Or if I write the name of a person who conducted that teaching, I should get that relevant information. Ah, OK, so. Uh... Uh, okay, so that would be, yeah. So the computing part is what you're talking the most about. Uh, the, the input, output. Yes, thank you. That makes a uh, nice device, I suppose. Okay, so it's 10. And uh, <laughs> I got a message from someone who says, I thought it was 10 to 11. Um, so, uh, Savanita, and if anyone else joined late, we are going to create a Telegram group. Possibly, we will discuss uh, the next uh, session topics and stuff like that in that group. Uh, actually, Vaishnav is going to create that. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, we will all see in that group uh, the, the course structure, the shared notes. I will just share in that group once we create that. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Others, feel free to talk. I'm not going to end the meeting. I just said thank you so that people can leave. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh,
don't think others can hear us because the uh, microphone seems disconnected. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yes. Hello, sir. Akshay. Uh, uh, okay, Akshay. Um, I want to write in a whiteboard. Then my students should get that writing directly in their computer screen without shooting that whiteboard. Without the internet hmm. camera. <laughs> what I am writing in the whiteboard should get in the screen of my students' computer. Nice. So, so you are really seven plus idea where uh, the the board itself will become a input device, like a yes, yes. And when I am uh, facing towards the board, uh, if I am using the camera, then camera will show my back side of back side, right? But when hmm. the board is, board itself is the input device, the students can see the board only throughout the class. So there shouldn't be any intermediate devices like camera. Great, super. So uh, it's a huge uh, writing pad which can capture the notes and uh, directly yes. into. Makes sense. In Thank fact, you. there are some touch screen touch screen devices that do this already. Have you seen one of them? No, I didn't. I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine a hundred inch TV with touch screen, and when you draw on it, uh, it just uh, it'll, just like the screen uh, people are drawing right now, just like that, uh, it records. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll end this now. We're uh, taking a few, saving the notes and in the chat.